Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ran, and today I'm going to talk about From a Whisper to a Scream, which is a 1987 movie that really boasts that Vincent Price is in it. However, he's really not in it a whole lot. Not a spoiler, just putting it out there. This seems to happen a lot with um, quite a few movies that are like, oh, Sid Haig is in this movie, and then he's in it for like 30 seconds. But I feel like Vincent Price gets a little more than 30 seconds. So he does play a historian, librarian type character whom is trying to explain to this woman that the town that they live in is just evil. It's the root of all of these tragedies and he has just a few examples why. This woman has been following his niece's case who was just recently put to death by lethal injection because she killed a bunch of people. And he seems really unfazed. He's just like, yeah, it's the town. Read, read this. Have a vivid, vivid dream, like, reading of it, because that's what we experience. So it's an anthology movie, which is right up my alley. I love anthology movies. The first story is about a character who is just completely enamored with this woman, and he's kind of like having an internal battle with himself to ask her out and he finally musters up the courage to do so and um, when he's trying to kiss her and just do things like real real skeezy scuzzy things she, she wants no part of it and he accidentally or on purpose does kill her and then there's a weird uh, relationship that he has then after she's passed. The next story is about eternal life and maybe the perils that come along with it. It centralizes around a character who we pretty much assume he's a really bad guy. He gets shot. He somehow gets himself out in the middle of the little swampy bog area in a rowboat and is bleeding out when a man finds him. And as the guy, you know, saves his life. He goes out at night to do something and what does this guy do but snoop through all of his stuff and finds out secrets that he then really nastily wants to get from him. So we'll leave that one off there. There is a story about a woman who falls in love with a carnival worker whose specialty is eating razor blades, glass, just all things you really don't want to be eating. We find out that it's not metaphorically his heart that's in the carnival, but perhaps really his heart that's in the carnival. And uh, there's another story about, I think it's set in Civil War times, and they find out that the war has ended. And there's a group of, I think, three of the militia that just don't really acknowledge that it's over. They end up stumbling upon a camp of children that are just... A, a little bat shit and they're, you know, it's a little Lord of the Flies. They've made their own little society and don't really want to deal with adults, but they have uses for them. So I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free. What did I like about this movie? Uh, obviously that it's an anthology movie. I really enjoyed that. I thought um, the stories were at least entertaining. I thought that the acting was decent. Um, the gore, the gore is nice. Was very happy with that. And, uh, I, I love Vincent Price. So that's always a delight. What did I dislike about this movie? Even though they are in short anthology segments, the pacing of the stories themselves drug a little bit for me. I don't think they were actually as long as they felt. It was just the writing seemed like it just would not get to the point. It would not get to, you know, that point where you're watching something and you have to give it a little bit, but then it grabs your attention and you're really invested in it. I felt like that took probably five minutes longer than I would have liked. So that was a little disappointing and, you know, it, it's hard to keep track of what is going on if you're not engaged all the way. So there was a lot of rewinding on my part. Um, I think it was just the, the way the film quality was in the 80s. It's just not that great looking. 
The night shots are not that great looking. Some of the action seemed a bit blurry and hard to follow. Uh, the, the sound design was a little strange. Some choices were made, but again, it's the 80s, so I guess you get a pass. I found this movie streaming on Amazon Prime. I'm sure that it's available physical copy, other streaming services as well. I would probably rate this movie maybe like 2.5 out of 5 to 3 out of 5. I did enjoy it. Um, I probably would watch it again. I wonder if there's a restored copy somewhere that would be just a little clearer because Mama's got some vision problems. But I did like it. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? Please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to know what you thought. Which was your favorite part of the anthology? Which story did you like the most? I think personally, I would go with the carnival one because I, there's just something about horror and carnivals that I enjoy so much. And it, that was a very body horror heavy segment. So I enjoyed that because body horror does really get to me. And then, yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, if you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you enjoy Bloodbath and Beyond, because we love them very much, and uh, we want everyone to support them as well. They're a great, great people, and we're glad to call them friends of the channel. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My solo as well as reviews with the groom are available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And uh, I'm going to go whisper scream through the house, try to find my cat. See you later, guys. Bye.